Hi, in this video I want to explain how to do trinomial expansion applied to genetics and uh, this is going to be the only video on the whole internet how to do it. Um, usually uh, all the uh, questions are about binomial expansion and this is of course a simplified version. So before I will explain uh, trinomial expansion uh, applied to genetics I want to remind you how to do binomial expansion. This is only going to take one minute or so and uh, this would help you a lot uh, to understand how to do trinomial expansion. So imagine that we have allele A and B and uh, we square them because we have a diploid organism so we square. If we had triploid we have to put uh, 3 instead square and uh, here we would have uh, a plus b multiplied by itself a plus b and um, we are going to expand it as a, we have to multiply a by a here so this is going to be a a and then we have to multiply a by b so this is going to be plus a b and then we also have to multiply this b by this a so we are going to get uh, a b once again plus now we have to multiply b by b so we are going to get b b here and this all equal to we may rewrite a a as a squared and we can add this AB and this A to AB, so we are going to get to AB. And uh, we can uh, say that uh, B multiplied by, by B is equal to B squared. So this is uh, called uh, Hardy-Weinberg uh, formula and this would equal to 1. So all frequencies together would equal to 1. Uh, imagine such situation, for example, when allele A, homozygous recessive, that is AA or A squared, uh, I represent uh, with white alleles, and we have, for example, here 20% of them, and for the uh, heterozygous genotype, that is AB, we have uh, alleles A and we also have alleles B. And heterozygote represented uh, with, um, say, 30%. 50% of them would be alleles A and 15% would be alleles B. because uh, we have A, B, so alleles A and B in heterozygote would equal in heterozygous form. And also we have homozygous for alleles B and let's say this is going to be 50% and as you see we only have here uh, alleles A and alleles those these two types of alleles would make uh, three genotypes one genotype second genotype and third genotype but we can easily find uh, uh, frequencies of the alleles A and B so frequency of the allele A would be 35% and frequency of the allele B would be 65%. So this is going to be frequency of the allele A and this is going to be frequency of the allele B. And together this is going to be 100%. Or 100% would equal also to 1. So A 
plus B would equal to 100% the frequencies of the allele A and B in three forms homozygous for the A, heterozygous and homozygous for B this would equal to 100% and also would equal to 1. So this is all about uh, binomial expansion and now I will move to trinomial expansion. Trinomial formula would look like allele A plus allele B plus allele C that we have for one locus so we have three alleles instead of two and we have diploid organism so raised two and we are going to expand this formula as a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab plus 2ac plus 2bc and all this would equal to 1 and as you remember, 1 equal to 100%. And also, as uh, I just mentioned it above, all the alleles A plus all the alleles B plus all the alleles C would equal to 1 or would equal to 100%. But uh, when we have uh, three alleles, like in this example, we would have not three genotypes like uh, when we have two uh, alleles but we would have six genotypes so one genotype, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth genotype with three alleles we can get uh, six genotypes so let's now uh, solve a real life problem for example we have uh, 1000 plants so let's say total we have 1000 plants and we know that uh, uh, homozygous for the A we have uh, AA that would equal to A squared we have 150 plants and we also know that we have uh, homozygous for B uh, that is B squared 200 plants so uh, how can we solve uh, this problem when we know only this uh, information for the homozygous A and for the homozygous B and we are going to find frequency dividing 150 by 1000 so frequency for the homozygous for A would be 0 0.15 and here we would going to do the same we are going to divide 200 by uh, 1000 and this is going to be frequency for the B squared or BB that is going to be 0 0.2 and uh, now we can find uh, a and B frequencies that we uh, need here A and B for this formula so if we know A squared and B squared it's easy to find A and B we just have to take a square root so A would equal to square root of 0 0.15 and the frequency here would equal to 0 0.39 and B would equal to square root of 0 0.2 that is B squared so B would equal to 0 0.45 and all these answers are rounded to two decimal places so when we know A and B, it's easy to find C. We just have to uh, rewrite, rearrange this formula. So C would equal to 1 minus A and minus B. And we already know the answers for A and B. So now it would be easily to solve. 
So C would equal to 1 minus 0 0.39, that is frequency of A, and minus 0 0.45, that is frequency of the B. So the C would equal to 0 0.16. So now we know A frequency, B frequency, and frequency of the little c. And we also know uh, frequency of the A squared, that is uh, here. And we know frequency of the B squared, that is here. So uh, now we can uh, solve for the C squared. As long as we know that c equal to 0 0.16, so c squared would be uh, 0 0.16 raised to, and the answer here is 0 0.03, so this is going to be frequency of the c squared, so we know uh, c and we know c squared. So now we have everything we need to solve this pro problem and find all the uh, genotypic frequencies. And uh, let me rewrite uh, this formula uh, in number system. So we have a squared and this is going to be 0 0.15 that is a squared plus uh, b squared, that is going to be uh, 0 0.2, and this is going to be b squared, plus c squared, and this is going to be 0 0.03, so this is going to be c squared, so we solve it this part of the formula, we know a squared, b squared, and c squared, and here is all these frequencies. So now we add plus 2 a b, and uh, frequency of the a would be uh, 0 0.39 multiply it by b, that is 0 0.45 and plus uh, 2 uh, ac so we have to put ac here and a uh, is 0 0.39 uh, multiplied by C and C is uh, 0 0.16 so uh, plus two multiplied by BC that is going to be frequency of the BC and frequency of the B is 0, 0 0.45 and frequency of the C is uh, 0 0.16 so the frequencies would be once again let me redraw the first part uh, this is going to be 0 0.15 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.03 plus now let's calculate this part 0 0.35 and this is going to be genotype AB plus genotype AC that is going to be here we just have to multiply these numbers 
and this is going to be 0 0.12 I round uh, all the numbers so this is going to be genotype AC and this is going to be frequency and the last genotype that we have to calculate is going to be BC so this is going to be 0 0.14 and this is genotype B, C. So if we add all these frequencies, we are going to get uh, 1. Or 100%. If we express it as a percentage, and in order to do this, we just have to move um, this comma to decimal places to the right. So here we would have 15% uh, plus 20% plus 3% plus, uh, plus 35% plus 12% and plus 14%. And all this would equal to 100%. So, as you see, 1 equal to 100%. If you add all these numbers, actually you are going to get 99%. And uh, this is because I rounded all the numbers. But if I use it more decimal places, like 3, 5 decimal places, the answer would be exactly 100%, so this is a, a mistake negligible, we still consider it 100% and 1. And of course such situation when we have only two alleles for one locus is uh, not very realistic, because in real life we have uh, more than two alleles for one locus. Uh, it can be three as in our example that we saw with today four, five, and even more. Uh, if we consider also um, single nucleotide polymorphism, uh, we can uh, have even hundreds and thousands of different uh, uh, versions of the same gene. Uh, and uh, we call uh, alleles only those versions of the gene that is uh, present in the gene pool in more than 1% and those that is present in less than 1% would be considered uh, mutations. So now you would be better prepared for uh, such questions if your professor would be creative and would give you, uh, instead of uh, usual uh, binomial expansion, uh, the problem with three uh, alleles. Uh, now I think you would be able to solve such problem without any difficulties. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe to my channel. I post new videos almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.